Hello everybody, uh, in today's video we're going to talk a little bit about the periodic table and a little bit about atomic structure. Now as we all know the periodic table took a long time to develop into what we have today. Um, however the modern periodic table is arranged into groups and periods. Let's talk about groups first of all. So a group is essentially a column, it's the up and down um, part of the periodic table. So there's one group for example. And what we know is this, every element in the same group will have the same number of electrons and also therefore the same number of protons, for example. Okay. The only thing that changes as you go down the group is that the number of shells increases. Okay. Now, we also have periods and the periods are the ones that go across. So, for example, I could draw a period coming across here. Now, when we go across a period, the number of electrons in the outer shell will change each time because you're moving from group 1 to group 2 to group 3 to group 4 and so on. Right? So the number of electrons in the outer shell is now going to be changing. So what's going to be staying the same uh, as we move across a period? Well, I'll tell you. It is the number of shells, okay? So, every element that's in the same period will have the same number of shells. The only thing that changes is the number of electrons in the outer shell. Now, what you notice about some particular elements in the periodic table is that they have a slightly strange number um, as their... Uh, relative atomic mass. So copper, for example, has got a relative ma uh, atomic mass of 63.5. Now, as we know, the relative atomic mass is the sum of the number of protons and the number of neutrons. So how can it have a relative atomic mass of 63.5? Because you can't really have half a proton or half a neutron, can you? So let's delve into this a little bit more deeply. So what we saw was that copper has got a relative atomic mass of 63.5. So, we need to work out why that is. And the reason behind this is isotopes. Copper has got two stable isotopes. One of them is copper 63. And the other one is copper 65. Now at this point, it's worth reminding ourselves, what is the definition of an isotope? So, isotopes are atoms of the same element. So these are both atoms of copper that have got the same number of protons and the same number of electrons. So, so all of these have got 29 protons. Both of these have got 29 protons, but they've got a different number of neutrons and therefore a different mass number. Okay, So, why is it then that we have 63 and 65? Surely, if you had half and half, 50% of each of these, you'd come out with a relative atomic mass of 64. Well, this is actually to do with the fact that we don't have half and half of these two isotopes. What we have instead is approximately 75% of the 63 copper isotope and approximately 25% of the copper 65 isotope. So when we take into account the different abundance of these two isotopes, our average value becomes 63.5. Okay, So they're roughly in the proportion of 3 to 1. So what we have to remember is that the relative atomic mass is the average mass of all of the isotopes. Now, we are talking about atomic structure here, and it's important that we realise how much models of the atom have changed over time. So I'll just talk really briefly about the two main models and how one developed into the other. Now, a long time ago, people didn't realise... Um, that we had electrons in shells, for example. One of the early models of the atom was called the plum pudding model. 
And in the plum pudding model, here's what you had. We have a single ball or sphere of positive charge. The electrons are embedded randomly. And there is no nucleus at the centre. Now, over time, many scientists worked on developing the model of the atom. And eventually, we came to the nuclear model. Now, in the nuclear model, things are slightly different. We don't have a ball of positive charge, but the positive charge is at the centre. It's centred at the nucleus. So, our positive charge... ...is at the centre. And what about the electrons? Well, the electrons are in shells around the positive nucleus. So, no nucleus in the plum pudding model, but in the nuclear model, we do have a nucleus. So, it's important that we realise and appreciate that the model of the atom has changed from the plum pudding to the nuclear model.